but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul, to keep commandments, the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for your good. <clears throat> lesson aim. By the end of this lesson, we will explain what our response should be to God's unconditional love. Reflect on God's love and justice and evaluate how loving and just we are towards others. Amen? This lesson starts off, you know, whenever you want to know what, what something was instituted for, why was it made, why was it created, all you have to do is go back to the Old Testament. Hit Genesis and Leviticus and Deuteronomy and you'll find out what the purposes were for God created it and God instituted it. Go back to the Old Testament. This is your basic knowledge for what, why, and where. When God looked at man, he said, you know what? It ain't good that man should be alone. So God created a woman. Help me for the man. Not to be in front of the man, not to be behind the man, but taken out of the side of man. You can always find your basics by going to the Old Testament, and the Lord is letting us know what is the heart of the law to love God. You know, verse uh, 12 says, Serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul. What does that leave? nothing. If you give in God all your heart and all your soul, you ain't got time to give it to nobody else or nothing else. But we don't do that. When you take your medicine, what the doctor prescribes to you, you take it just like he told you. You don't deviate. God tell you something and you say, oh, he don't know. I don't even know. He don't know what he's talking about. But you won't take that medicine in the wrong way. You do just what the doctor tell you. Isn't that something? We have to know that if we take the prescription the way that God has set it up, we can't go wrong. And when we go wrong, it's because we've tweaked what he's saying. Now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear or put God first? To walk in his ways, to love him, to serve him, the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul to keep, verse 13, to keep his com the commandments of the Lord and his statutes which I command thee this day for your good. God is good all by himself. He don't need, he don't need to be saying this. He's doing this for our good. But I wonder if we really listening. He brought them out of Egypt. As soon as he got them out of Egypt, what did they do? Huh? They got what? They backslid. They created their own God. Moses went over the hill just for a minute. They got all their gold together and they created a calf of gold. Something we can touch. Something we can look at. We done just got all smart after we came out of bondage. Isn't that something? You in bondage 400 years. Somebody got their foot on your neck. You making bricks every day for 400. Can you imagine? You making bricks for 400 years. I come and get you out of the, your labor. You ain't getting paid no wages. There is no wages for slavery. Pull you out, take you. You take all the riches out of Egypt when you leave. You get to a place where you can get some rest, the leader leaves. And Elder Lowe, they had an epiphany. They had a vision. Moses don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. Ain't that something? Think about that. So God is saying, the heart of my law is love. I love you. You didn't love me. I didn't, you didn't bring me out of a bondage. I brought you out of bondage. You cried to me. I heard your cries. I sent the prophet Moses to bring you out. 
And all I'm asking you to do is put me first. Any comments? Yes, sir. And it's, it's, see, just to add to that, when you didn't have nothing, I remember, see, I remember them days when we poured water in our cornflakes because we didn't have milk. I remember when we had a piece of bread and we was praying for sugar, you know, to put on top of that bread so we could stick it up under. We didn't have microwave, so we stuck it up under the oven where the fire was and you put that margarine, sometimes the margarine would rip a hole in the bread and you got to push it back down, you know. <laughs> and then you, you sprinkle the sugar on, and you know, I'm just saying. And you were praying, you were praying, Lord, give us something to eat. Yeah. Now we get up and the refrigerator is full so you don't entreat God. Yeah. You don't thank him for what you got. You just say, oh, what am I going to uh, Steak again? <laughs> see, when we get full, you see, this is, a, this is, this is the power of God speaking right now. When you have an abundance of things, you forget about God. Because you don't have to pray for it. See, God knows how to get your attention. So when you fall into without, you, your eyes really go quick to uh, Jesus. Lord, we hungry. See, we, we got to remember, see, I, I, I left it at home. I, man, I hate that. I had that paper where, where we dismiss with. And all nations that forget God. See, we forget when we have something. When you don't have, we always thinking about it. When them, when them growlings come in your stomach, oh, you call on him quick. See, the Lord is letting us know that we have, in verse 14 it says, Behold, the heaven and the heavens of heavens is the Lord's, thy God, and the earth also that is with therein. Only the Lord, verse 15, had delight in the fathers to love them. He chose their seed after them, even above all people as it is this day. It is chosen. He has not left his love of his chosen people. And if the people would have listened to him, they wouldn't have went through all the things that they went through. Jesus was born into them people because those people were known throughout the world. See, when Solomon was in power, he ruled the world in peace. God gave him that. Kings of the world came from everywhere to hear Solomon's wisdom and to listen to him. And they would drop off a boatload of money and a daughter and go on about their business. But the powers that be said, this can't be. So they started plotting. Outside influences came in, divided the kingdom after Solomon's demise, and they've been being scattered ever since. Why? Because we won't turn back to the Lord and stay focused on him. God made us a promise in the same chapter, in the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, he said, if you will serve me, if you will just, let me get to that so you can see for yourself. See, God is not slack concerning his promise. And God is not a man that he would lie. If he said it, he meant it, and that's the way it is, and it's over. We don't have to worry about anything. 
See, God made a promise <clears throat> to the children of Israel concerning his leader, Moses, and he said in the first two verses, it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thou God. And then he went on and told them all what the blessings would be and how you could get these things if you would just observe. Verse 58 of the same chapter. If thou wilt not observe to do the words of this law that are written in this book, thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. And the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again with ships. By the way thereof I spake unto thou, thou shalt see it no more again. There you shall be sold to your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man will be able to buy you out of their hands. That's if we don't obey. The Lord, our God, is still making the same plea to us today, and the only thing he's done is cut out the middleman. He's made it that you can come direct. You don't have to go through a priest. You don't have to go through anybody. You can go direct to Jesus for yourself. But while you're coming in, and your, your newborn babe on sincere milk, you don't understand the scriptures. While you're learning, we're here to help one another. We help us one of another. Because you have to be able to interpret the scriptures to understand them in all thy getting. Get an understanding. Once you get an understanding, then you'll understand how to seek the Lord for yourself to answer the questions that you have through his word. Because every question you have, he has an answer. Then he can give it to you verbally if he wants to, if he chooses. Are y'all with me? We have to get to a point where we understand that our love has to be greater than our enemies hate. I'm gonna say that again. We have to know that our love has to be greater than our enemies hate. And if our love is greater, there's nothing that can hold us down on this earth. Nothing. But if you fall into the condemnation of allowing yourself to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the devil on your own, Martin, you ain't no match for fighting the devil on your own. He'll knock you out. But through the blood of Jesus, I'm more than a conqueror. And I ain't got time to be arguing with him. He's already a loser. He's already lost. Time has to run its course, and he's going to spend eternity in that lake of fire. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Oh, go right on. <laughs> yeah. Who? Uh -huh. Yeah. Amen. He says, in, even in verse 17, for the Lord your God is God of gods, the Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh rewards. In other words, you can't bribe the Lord. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, and we that dwell in it, cattle on a thousand hills, belongs to the Lord. We have to know everything that we come across, everything that we gain, you, you, enjoy it while you can. Because it's not going with you. Give it to somebody while you can. Maybe they can get some enjoyment out of it. It may be shiny. I remember the first time I bought, I bought a, a Avalanche a, a pickup. Man, that thing was beautiful. I drive up, people said, man, that's a bad ride. And, and Elder Lloyd ran out of gas. <laughs> and I say, this thing, as pretty as it is, if you don't put gas in it, it ain't going nowhere. And without me, it ain't going nowhere. This is just another job for me. That's all this is. I got to wash it, clean it, gas it, oil it. 
maintenance it. The same with the house. I want a big house. I want six bedrooms. You got two and you can't even keep them clean. But you want a six bedroom. Come on, man. You can get that. Thank you, Elder. You can only sleep in one. Be careful what you ask for because God will give it to you. Then you'll lose your mind trying to figure out who's going to help me clean this thing. And don't let a noise be in one of them six bedrooms at night while you're in the bed. What was that? I don't know. You tell your wife, your wife tell you, go to see. No, you go see. <laughs> it ain't bothering me. You, you don't want to talk about you heard a noise. See, you, we have to be careful because God knows what's best for us. Don't you know God knows us better than we'll ever know ourselves? Don't you know that this great God knew that if he put you in flesh, he would keep you grounded? And then he says, in me, that's in my flesh, dwelleth, what did you say, Myron? No good thing. Even when I'm trying to do good, evil is always present. God knows how to keep you grounded because if he would turn you loose as a spirit, he probably have to slay everybody. Because you think, I'm going to be here today and I'm going to be over there tomorrow. And you ain't got to wait. See, when you get ready to go to New York, you got to go through, who, who flew lately? You got to go through the TSA. You know what I'm talking about. You, you got to wait. They check your baggage in. They check you in, take your shoes off and all that stuff, and you got to do all this. And, and then you got to wait, and then you get on the plane, and you wait some more. See, but a spirit just goes. The Lord tells the angels to go, and they, they gone. So he said, no, I can't do that with these knuckleheads. They just don't, they, I, you know. I, I got to let them see themselves, you know, because if I don't let them see themselves, they're going to blame me. They're going to say, Lord, why did you, you know, but it's not God. Who is it? It's us. The, the, the lesson aim says, by the end of this lesson, we will explain our response, what our response should be to God's unconditional love. What should be our response to God's unconditional love? That's it. That's, that's it. But do we do that? Yeah. Obey. You know, we're we're doing that. We're we're mature. We're we're mature. We're we're doing that. We have to teach. I, I was just I was saying earlier for y'all that wasn't here. My uh, my nephew got married, you know, and and so when I went to the wedding, I looked over at the table, you know, and they had their spirits over there, you know, you know what I mean, Martin, you, you. And I looked at my wife and I said, honey, you ready? She said, yeah. I said, they ain't coming in the morning. My kids always come when I preach, but it was a wedding took place last night. They ain't getting up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Young people are going to do what they feel they need to do because they're trying to find the truth. When they say, turn up, they, you hear them say, turn up. They don't know tomorrow they're going to be like this. Uh, turn off that light. Turn that TV down. Why are you yelling? You know, they, but they got to learn these things. What am I saying? See, when we come into the knowledge of what God does and has done for us, we should be receptive with obedience and thanksgiving. But we find ourselves compromising. And why do we compromise God's love? Why, why do we compromise? We want to make it into heaven, but for some reason, you don't want to tell your child the truth. You don't really want to, you know. 
Why? Right. You said something. You said something. Ask God. It's a book of, and, and see, that, that what you just said is the key. See, faith, hope, and love. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without hope, how are you going to have faith? Without love, why would you even start a prayer concerning someone else? See, if you love somebody, you don't have a problem giving. You cannot love without giving. But you can give without love. But see, when I love somebody, I want to do the best that I can for them. And this is what God has done for us. He's let everybody know, if I sacrifice my own son, do you think you're going to get away? In other words, whom the Lord loveth, he has to chastise you. He has to keep you ground, grounded and rooted in love. Because if you don't love, you're not going to be able to see the Father. If you have a motive, an ulterior motive of what you will or you won't do, God can't use you. Trust in the Lord with lean not. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and then he'll tell you what's the next move to be made. But sometimes we go on our own way, and we wonder, Lord, what just happened? You went your own way. He told you don't do it, and you did it anyway. Why? See, the writer goes on and says, Love ye therefore the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. In verse 18, he says, he doth execute judgment of the fatherless and widow and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. Did y'all know that? That is not a suggestion. Say it again. Amen. For the widowless. It's for the widows and the fatherless. We're supposed, that's our task. That's what we're supposed to do. We have a mandate that we're supposed to love the strangers. Listen, when we were strangers in the land of Egypt and you cried out to the Lord, the Lord heard our plea, but he had to let the land know who he was. Look, when you look at Moses, what you'll find is he told Moses, go to my people, I've heard their cry and let Pharaoh know to let my people go. But before you get there, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. Because I'm going to show the world something that they've never seen before. So every time Pharaoh opened his mouth, the Lord let him know, you ain't running nothing. When we look at the world today and what we're going through, what we got to realize is that money only goes so far. You know, I, I turn on the TV and I see the, the, the hearings. I hear them talking, Elder Lowe, but I don't see nobody getting locked up. So it's just talk. It's idle talk. Because why? He who has the goal makes the rules in man's world. But they're not going to get away with God. See, <clears throat> who do you think put that president out of office? 
That was God. God put him out of office. Men tried to bring him back up. They're still trying to bring him back up. Why? Because they never made so much money in their lives. They don't love Trump. They can care less about Trump. But while Trump is over here, got everybody's attention over here, they're over here taking all the money. They're doing all these other things that they, see, the things that we see are not the things that are really going on. Government's only function is to control. They don't care what you're doing as long as you pay your taxes. You don't believe me? Stop paying your taxes and see what happens. Stop paying your taxes and see what happens. I'm, 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 I'm telling you something right now. They will, they will seize your bank accounts, take your house. They'll take your, <laughs> they took Red Fox's Great Danes. How you gonna take a man's dogs? Took his Great Danes. Back taxes. When you look at what God is saying, God is saying, love one another, respect one another. Don't you know that everything that you do to your brother or your sister out of malice is recorded? And guess who recorded it? You are. You didn't know that? You're recording it. So when God has you on the throne and it's your time of judgment and he hit rewind on your recording in your heart and it rewinds back, it's going to be you that show the picture very clear. And your heart's desire is what's going to be before you. So if you have malice in your heart, if you have hatred in your heart or jealousy in your heart, you're going to have to give an account for that. Not only are you going to give an account for your jealousy, envy, and hatred, but you got to give an account for every outer word that comes out of your mouth. Be careful what you say. You know, you can change, man. You've been through some tough stuff. Some people have been through some tough things, and your heart is hard. Now, I understand that. I was there. But I am so glad that the Lord tenderized my heart. And you know back in the old days, they used to have this wooden mallet with them uh, things poking out of, and they said it would tenderize the meat. They beat the meat. Remember how the mothers and grandmothers beat that meat? <laughs> they be beating it, talking about they tenderize it. You, you destroying it. Well, I'm glad God doesn't take that mallet to our heads because of the anger and the malice in our hearts. You understand what I'm saying? He loves us, he speaks to us, and he tells us, you can change. You know, what is the only thing that can't be forgiven? Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Do you know it would be hard for you to blaspheme? I'm, I'm telling you something. You would have to stand in God's presence, be in the heavenly realm, and know what's going on. You, listen, when you do that, you kicked out forever. Who do you know that's been kicked out forever? Satan. Satan, that's it. He knew better, but he did it anyway. No, he didn't. He, he took a third of the angels with him. Listen, you can be forgiven for anything, and we have to put this message out there. I used to go to juvenile hall, and them kids wouldn't come to me, and, and I couldn't minister to them because they thought what they had did was so terrible, God would never forgive them. And, I, and the Lord put that in my spirit, and I started preaching it out loud. God will forgive you for anything. God will forgive you for anything. And a young man came to me, and he was crying, and he said he, he killed a man. He didn't mean to kill him. Him and his brother was hungry. His grandmother was raising him. Father's in the pen. Mother's in the pen. They own crack. So his grandmother couldn't. It was the end of the month. They couldn't eat. He was hungry. He said, so they went in the store, they stole some stuff. The man chased him out of the store, he got a stick, he swung because he had his little brother, hit him in the head, the man fell, hit his head on the cement, died. He said, God can't forgive me for that. I said, man, come here, let me show you something. I said, David killed the man behind sex. You was hungry. I said, come here, let me show you this. Paul killed a man or had a man killed for preaching in the name of Jesus. You didn't do that. And they're written in the, in the book of life. People need to know that they can be forgiven. 
and when they know they can be forgiven, it opens them up. We was crying like little babies. This young man, they gave that young man 50 years. He was sentenced under that old law. At 14 years of age, you can be sentenced as an adult. So now, I don't know, I, I think he's changed, but he was 14 then, and when he turned 25, they were gonna take him out of youth authority and take him straight to the Department of Corrections. And we prayed, he got saved, his life has changed. He's in Jesus' hands now. But what I'm saying is we have to speak the truth and we have to let everybody know God is a forgiving, long-suffering God. He's the God that says, I'm married to the backslider. I will be with you even to the end of the earth. Yes, sir. Oh, he's doing time right now. Mm -hmm. Amen. But once, see, once you get saved, once you get saved, what you did before you were saved, all erased. It's all erased. It's all gone. Once you give your life to the Lord, you start fresh. You knew. God throws all of our burdens into the sea of forgetfulness and he don't bring it up no more. We are only something on the earth that brings up old stuff. I forgive you and then next year. You know what you did when you did last year. You, you, you did that. I ain't forgave you for that. I was, I, I was joking with a brother one time and, and we, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at it, you know. And I, I got on him pretty bad. And he said, man, he was in tears. He said, man, you can't be talking to me like that. You're a preacher. I said, man, you forgive me. He said, no, I ain't going to forgive you. <laughs> and I said, well, man, I'm sorry, man. I, I didn't mean to go that far. I got carried away. We have to know that when you ask for forgiveness, and if somebody tells you they're not going to forgive you, there is no more. You've done what you're supposed to do. You understand what I'm saying? We're on the same page? If you do something to someone and you ask that person to forgive you and they say no, you don't, you don't already done what you're supposed to do. Keep it moving. But by the same token, don't be that person. See, if a person come to me and say, forgive me, I have to forgive them. As a matter of fact, I'm going to forgive them before that. Because I don't want them to fall in the hands of a... Thank you, Myron. That's right. Your sins won't be forgiven. We have to know that we have life in our heart. In this lesson, it says, uh, circumcise your hearts. Are y'all with me? Verse 16. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be ye no more stiff-necked. You know what that stiff neck means? Yep. What do it mean? That's right. And I have an analogy to that. You ever seen cement? You know, it makes a, takes a lot to make up the ingredients of, of cement. And then they say you, you set it. You, you, you put where you want it to be at and you set it. And guess what it does? It hardens. And it's permanently set. That's stiff neck. You, I ain't changing no matter what. Don't be that. If you don't change as you get older, you're not going to get old. Getting old takes some changes. Boy, I'm telling you, them moans and them grunts. Whew. Gee, I said, I'm going to start walking again, Martin. I did about a mile and a half. When I got home, I was limping. I was like, man, it ain't easy as it used to be. You know, and they have this thing you can check on your phone and tell you how many steps you took. I don't need to see that, LLO. I just need some exercise. 10,000 steps. Who is that? Man! That's the key, right? That's the key. Man, I'm telling you, Knees, back, what I'm saying, changes are good for your life. 
If you can't change, you stiff necked. You, you just right for the grave. And I ain't ready to go just yet. I want to see some things. I want to see Africa. I would love to see Africa. I want to see Alaska too, but I would love to see Africa. Hmm? I'm, I'm, when I get ready to go, I'm going to come see you because I want to see it. That, that's on my bucket list. You know what I mean? I, any comments, any questions? This is a wonderful lesson. Listen, whenever, don't ever y'all forget this. Whenever you want to know something, why it was created, what it was made for, go back to Leviticus, Deuteronomy, uh, uh, Exodus, Genesis. It tells you exactly what everything was made for. And it hasn't changed. When God gave the sun and the moon their duties, they ain't changed since time began. They ain't gonna change. You know the only person that changes? Oh, knucklehead man. We the only ones that change. We question God. God, you, did you really mean that what you said? But they don't say we change. Man say we're not changing. They say we're all. Yeah, that's the. That's why we died in that direction. We yeah. worked out sentences. Yeah. God said, don't eat nothing with the blood in it. That's the life of whatever you're eating. Don't eat the blood. What do we do? Man, give me your, uh, what do they have that stuff that, that's? Prime rib. Prime rib, yeah. Prime rib, this bloody come. I was like, what is that? They said it's prime rib. I don't want that. You love it bloody? I don't eat nothing with blood in it. Nothing. The words say don't eat it, I don't do it. I, if the words say go left, I don't even question why you say don't go right. <laughs> I, hey, I heard this cowboy one night say at the Cattleman's uh, restaurant, he said, uh, throw it on the grill, brown it on both sides, and bring it over here and throw it on the plate. And I said, he's serious? He said, yeah, that's, he wanted rare. And I said, well, you might as well just go slap the cow upside the head and just start eating it right there. You know, get the leather jacket while you're getting the meat. Blood, we're not supposed to eat blood. Did you know that? Did y'all know that? We ain't supposed to eat stuff with blood in it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the, the blood it, the, was for the remission of sins. That's why the sacrifice was made that we could be forgiven our sins. And that's why Jesus shed his blood that we might have a right. Blood is pressed. Don't you know that if you lose too much blood, you what? You dead. We got we to gotta know the heart of the law is this. God expects our love. If you don't get nothing else out of this lesson, get that. The heart of the law was love, and we couldn't even keep that. Because if we loved the Lord, we would have kept his commandments and we would have lived right. But it, it had gotten to the point where we, we diluted that, and the priest had to have a rope tied around his waist. He's supposed to be right when he go in to the Holy of Holies. Hey, but Lord, why did he need a rope tied around his waist when he went in there? He went in there with, with bad intent. See, well, we, we just, I'm just saying in general, you know what I mean? And we think of ourselves more than what we ought to. And all we do, we're deceiving ourselves. That's why he said, if you say you have no sin, you make him a liar. Because we be trying to get this thing right. Listen, we do the best that we can while we can, and we live the best that we can as best we know how. And we ask forgiveness for the things that we don't even know we've done, just in case somebody spoke. I didn't see them, but they say, you see me, you didn't even speak to me. I'm going to ask forgiveness for that too. You know what I'm saying, Martin? Just in case, I've, 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 hurt somebody's feelings that I didn't know. 
so that way when I do talk to them, they'll forgive me. Amen? Amen. Any, any comments or any questions? We got to get out of here, y'all. <coughs> now remember, next week, or starting next Sunday, we're going to have one service. And then Sunday school is going to be together for the whole month in the sanctuary. Okay? All, we're going to be combined. Well, no, we got it. We get out about 9.30. Yeah, it's only one service in the morning, and then the Sunday school starts right after, about 9.30. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, the Sunday school? Sunday school is going to be at 9.30 still. Yeah, yeah. So when, next week, starting next week for four Sundays, and the fifth Sunday, uh, it's a little bit later, but it'll be all over here in the sanctuary, okay? And we're going we gonna to sit with the women. Uh, yes. It's only going to be one service. Uh, because there's so much going on in the month of July. Our pastor said he just wants to have one service. The Lord has led him to have. You can also okay. mail your donation to 3939 Broadway, Sacramento. I pray to live my life as you require me according to Micah 6 and 8. To, to act just to is that just to be and, and to love in mercy building. and to walk All humbly with my God. Service hours I pray to stay close to you Sunday worship, and revere your presence in my life by walking in your ways. Forgive me for times this week that I did not exemplify your love and mercy to Each others. And, every Sunday. and I ask for your strength every in Jesus' Monday name, night I pray. Prayer and connect. That's Love right. You can go to our Zoom to ID That's on Monday nights at 7 p.m. and join the Worry-Free Zone, mm-hmm. Praying with a Purpose. And if you miss us on Monday, Tuesday and Thursday is Noonday Prayer. That's right, Noonday Prayer on Zoom with All Nations Church of God in Christ. Prayer changes things. And then... Um, Bible study for the next couple of weeks will only be at 7 p.m. Missionary Judy is on vacation, so we do not have a 10.30 a.m. Bible study. Thursday night is YPWW at 6.30. If you'd like to receive the notification and flyers our pastor sends out on a regular basis, send your email address to our email address, All Nations, uh, pastor at allnationschurch.comcast.net. And Today, yes, today is our children's church virtual class and in person. So today, 1045, join Sister Marky Harvey Thomas in the East Campus or on the church Zoom ID. Their lesson today, Up, Up, and Away, Jesus Returned to Heaven. And their um, scripture is Luke 24, 13 to 52, and Acts 1, 1 to 11. Today also, yes, today is Fourth Sunday, so our Puritans class, Kingman Club will be meeting in the East Campus at 1045. So parents, come on out. Grandparents, come on out. You guys bring the children. I was an example when I was a younger woman. Classes, our venues. When I was a younger woman. What's going on today? And uh, and, and I had four children. I've always was going around Tuesdays doing things, Thursdays, shopping and everything. And Tuesday, but I always had a frown on my face. I wasn't smiling. I was just busy doing my own business. And a a young person, a young, uh, young, a um, medium older man came up to me, he and his wife, say, you're such a beautiful woman. Why don't you smile sometimes? So I thought again, instead of doing my... First is the youth explosion and block party. That's right. Friday will be hype night. Saturday will be the backpack giveaway, carnival style, block party. And then Sunday will be our own missionary Jamie Martin for the grand finale. If you have any, inf- if you need any more information, contact Sister Kawana. Her uh, email address, I believe, is listed, and or contact the church's office. And then, as a reminder, the month of July, yes, special service hours for July at 8:30 a.m. only on Sunday, the 3rd, the 10th, the 17th, and the 4th. And in our term, the 1st Sunday, 2nd Sunday, 3rd Sunday, and 4th Sunday will be an 8.30 a.m. service only. Then on the 5th Sunday, which is Youth Day, woohoo! they will have a 10.30 a.m. service um, to help support our youth and to hear our special guest with her message. Those are the announcements for All Nations Church of God in Christ. Govern yourself accordingly and be blessed. Thank you.